Boom, and we're back in, straight to the point, covering Trillion Dollar Coach by Eric Schmidt. Today we're covering the fifth keynote from the book. Effective leaders aren't afraid to show their emotions. There's a common idea that people who show their emotions in the workplace aren't as competent as their less touchy-feely peers, but that's a fallacy. Few people know that better than the folks who work with Bill. Bill was famous for his personal warmth and informality. He gave his colleagues bear hugs, had a breezy and often profound way of talking, and wouldn't hesitate to blow a kiss to a colleague on the other side of the meeting room. More importantly, he dropped everything to help people out if they were in trouble. When Steve Jobs was incapacitated by cancer, for example, Bill visited him in the hospital every day. This wasn't just a personal quirk, showing that you care about the people you work with is a telltale sign of an effective leader. Take a 2014 study by leadership and HR experts, Segal Barsaid and Olivia O'Neill. They found that organisations which foster compassionate love, a kind of emotional openness that treats everyone as equals, have higher rates of employee satisfaction, better team performance levels and lower absenteeism. That's because this approach breaks down the barriers between the personal and professional, which in turn means that people don't feel like they have to check part of their personalities at the door when they enter the office. Showing your emotions at work might seem like a scary proposition, but don't worry, you don't have to be as outgoing as Bill to pull it off. In fact, there are all sorts of simple ways to create a more open, accepting environment. When Bill was working at Apple, he made sure that the board responded to presentations they liked by getting out of their chairs and clapping, as Apple's Phil Schiller recalls. That was like a parent showing his appreciation for a child. Bruce Scheisen, a software developer at Claris, remembers observing Bill's easygoing way of talking to colleagues in the elevator or cafeteria. Mimicking this didn't come naturally to Bruce, but then he realised how little effort it actually took once he got into the habit. Simply remembering names and asking, how's it going? Or, what are you working on? Was more than enough to start building personal connections with his co-workers. Oh, my God.